I might remind the Minister that on the 16th of January 2014, I raised this issue with him in the Dáil, and I said to him that many large tracts of property that will be sold off will not be bought by Irish people. They will be purchased by foreign investors who will reap benefits at the expense of the Irish people. And these people will end up with a lot of rental property which will give them a monopoly in the game. That was January 2014. And sadly, uh, I wish I had been wrong, but that's exactly what's happened. Um, now, what has the, the level of influence of vulture funds and REITs in this country, uh, I think, has gone off the Richter scale. And if people are wondering why a two-bed apartment in this city now, in a working-class area, can cost up to 1,500 euros a month, there's a very good reason for it. Because these people do have a monopoly, and we haven't addressed the problem. Now, uh, the, the tax uh, benefits and exemptions that they were afforded is actually uh, is questionable from a legal point of view. And I have written to the EU regarding the exemptions for non-resident investors uh, in Irish REITs and whether it breaches the EU state rules. And the Commission has confirmed to me that they're examining it. Now, I've also written to Revenue regarding exemptions for dividends withholding tax for Irish companies. They have confirmed to me that registered Irish charities uh, are exempt from dividends withholding tax this would mean that an Irish charity investing in a REIT uh, would pay no tax on any profits they receive from the REIT. Given the current abuse by US vulture funds of charity status, it would be very interesting to see what particular charities are currently investing in REITs. Now, I realise the Minister is looking at Section 20, uh, 110, and uh, there will be uh, uh, possibly some clawback in this area. Now, I've received a letter under FOI from the Department of Finance recently in relation to WK Nolan, the firm which now operates Hibernia REIT. Uh, and there was correspondence between WK Nolan and Minister Noonan in 2011, lobbying the Minister to introduce REIT legislation in Ireland. And a, an incredible number of amount of correspondence was involved. And the letter references a positive meeting with NAMA in regard to REITs and NAMA's willingness to engage with REITs if they were established. Now, it would seem that a conflict of interest should have been established by NAMA in relation to these meetings, considering the role of Kevin Nolan within the agency at the time of the letter. He was a senior portfolio manager uh, with NAMA, and before he actually moved in there, he transferred his 30% shareholding in WK Nolan into a trust offshore. Uh, but it seems WK Nolan were still able to gain unfettered access to the agency. As we now know, following the successful lobbying of WK Nolan over a three-year period, REITs were introduced in 2013, and Kevin Nolan, having left NAMA, is now the CEO of Hibernia REIT. So literally, what we have, right, first of all, we have, we have the company lobbying the minister to get favourable status, in setting up these REITs. We then have the same gentlemen, actually, who were in NAMA, leave NAMA, and, and they, they actually admit that they benefit from the knowledge in NAMA, and actually proceeded to actually buy back some stuff that they sold for peanuts to some uh, US investment funds. There's going to be a serious issue around all this in time. And I think it's going to be problematic for the government dealing with it. And it was very interesting to hear on a recent uh, programme on RTE, but I think it was actually filmed last year, where David McWilliams was actually questioning the same individual, uh, Mr Kevin Nolan, about uh, how they set up business and all, and how they, how they did out the crash. And uh, David McWilliams said to him, there was no cash in Ireland, no access to cash. So you had to go to where the cash was when you knocked on the door of George Soros. What did you say to them? And Mr Nolan replied, well, we basically said that Dublin is a great office market. We said that you can buy office buildings basically in or below basement costs. And Mike Williams asked him, what does that mean? He says, so you can buy them below what they can be built for. What we had to answer was, we said we could do off markets. 
What does that mean? Mike Williams asked him. He says, that means, you know, a lot of property ends up in Darius Times or Irish Independent for sale by receivers or whatever. Basically, he said, we know enough people in Dublin to be able to go and buy the properties without having to go to auction or having to go to the market. And we've done 18 deals and 16 of them were done off market. So we've bought that. We've, you know, we've done quite deals uh, with people. We've done deals with banks. We've done them in a variety of different ways. If you buy something in an active, vibrant economy below what it actually costs to replace it, you should be in a pretty good shape to make money. You know what? He was 100% right. And we have seen so much of that go on in this country in the last five years. And NAMA have played a huge role in it. At a huge cost to the Irish people. It's just frightening what's gone on. And the government, sadly, does not want to know. It does not want to address the issue. Now, I realise that we're going to get some form of a, of a commission investigation into Project Egon. But it's actually very important for the future of business in Ireland that we look at every aspect of NAMA have operated. Because I tell you what, it has repercussions for long term business in Ireland. It has repercussions for those the international investors in uh, how many of them are prepared to come here. If we don't prove ourselves to be accountable and transparent in how we do big business, it will come back to bite us.